Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Jess and I'm a product designer at Sano Genetics and joining me is Marissa, a product manager at Sano. At Sano Genetics, our mission is to revolutionize healthcare through accessible and affordable genetic testing and precision medicine solutions. A key part of achieving this mission is putting the patient at the center of everything we do through patient-centric design practices. In this webinar, we'll explore the importance of patient-centric design, not just for our products, but also for our clinical trials and research initiatives. Thanks, Jess. Hi, everyone. My name is Marissa, and as Jess mentioned, I'm on the product team here at Sano, and I'm so excited to be joining Jess today to talk about all things patient-centric product design and how it underscores so much of the work that we do here at Sano. This is a huge topic and one that we could easily spend much more time on than we have today, but I'm hoping that in this conversation, we can touch on what patient-centric design means, what it means at Sano, and why it's important. And then Jess will also share how it comes to life in some of our workflows, processes, ways of working, so the how behind how we do this. And finally, I'll share um, a case study from one of our ongoing research opportunities that highlights the impact of some of these patient-centric product design decisions um, and how it ultimately makes our mission a reality. That being said, it's going to be an action-packed conversation and I'm very much looking forward to it. So thank you everyone for tuning in and let's jump in. So I think it's important to tee up this conversation by reflecting on a couple of questions. This is our why. Why is patient-centric design at the center of everything that we do? What does it mean in the clinical trial space and why is it so important? As the name suggests, patient-centric design in healthcare means that we acknowledge that a participant is more than just present in the ecosystem of a clinical trial, but they are and very much should be the focus of everything that we do, everything we build, everything that we design. And while this is a pretty straightforward concept in theory, it's one that's gained a lot of traction in the last 10 to 15 years, um, particularly because of the challenges in this space. The clinical trials industry is one that is highly complex. It's highly regulated. There are lots of different players. Studies can be very time and cost intensive. There's a lot of new, evolving, and interesting science across multiple disease areas and condition areas. And on top of all of this, you also need to consider the unique experiences of each individual who chooses to engage with clinical research. This means different levels of exposure to, familiarity with, and trust of the clinical research industry in general. And this becomes especially important when we think about groups that have been historically marginalized or underrepresented and have not had the chance to benefit from health research in the past, or in some cases have even have had actively negative experiences. Considering all of this, it's much easier to see why designing with participants in mind becomes a little bit more challenging in practice than it is in theory. But that being said, it's very much a problem that's worth solving because it enables us to make personalized medicine and access to treatments a reality for more individuals and more families. Next, why exactly is this important? Part of the ethos behind what we do at Sano is based on the idea that participants can engage in clinical research to learn more about themselves and their loved ones, feel more empowered to make important life decisions, for example, if and how to proceed with treatments, and third, to actually connect them to cures and treatments that have the potential to drastically improve their quality of life or that of the people that they care about. In terms of who we collaborate with at Sano, some of our partners can have the most cutting edge science, the most effective treatments, all the resources in the world, but ultimately this means nothing if participants don't know about or can't engage with or participate in clinical research, or in the case where they've had such a negative experience with research that it turns them off of it in the future, that means that people are missing out on some of the great science and the great work that's gone into developing some of these cures and treatments. We can reduce the risk of all of this by designing with participants, not just in mind, but as the focus from the very beginning. So one of the hypotheses that we have here at Sano is that if we can design a top-notch clinical trials experience for participants, meaning one that is transparent, supportive, and intuitive, that's ultimately how we can accelerate the world's transition to personalized medicine um, and ultimately bring these life-changing treatments to more individuals and families. Ultimately, a patient-centric design approach benefits everyone, not only researchers, not only customers, but including individuals that may not know anything about clinical research right now, but in 5, 10, 20, 50 years, might be seeing some of the benefits of the treatments that are then going to be out in the market based on the research that's being done today. All that being said, uh, it's a very exciting space to work in, and I'm so excited to pass it off to Jess to talk about what this looks like in practice. Thanks, Marissa. So as Marissa said, yeah, how, how do we incorporate patient-centric design into our product processes? 
So I'm going to walk through our current process for product design at SANO. So we have a cyclical product design process here at SANO, which means that we can deliver holistic user experiences for our participants that are always shaped with them in mind. So we always start with um, the first stage, which is discovery. So we always start with data. And the first step of that is collation. So collecting all of the data from key stakeholders, from our users. And then we go away and synthesize that data. So we take all of that information and we translate that into pain points and user journeys and key themes to think about as well. Then we use that data to inform and shape um, our product design thinking, our product roadmaps and so on. And this phase is really, really important because we anchor everything that we do decision wise. Um, it all comes back to the data, it all comes back to what our users want and need. The second stage is iterative design. So um, as part of that process, we do design workshops. So we engage um, users and key stakeholders to walk through um, very early rough and ready designs um, from wireframes um, up until high fidelity um, designs. Um, as part of those workshops, we um, place a big importance on cross-functional collaboration. So that's getting engagement across the business um, from everyone from um, engineering, also from clinical scientists, and also from patient engagement teams. And the reason that this that we do this is because we want to tap into all those different areas of specialism, and um, we want to make sure that the patients, that the um, that our user is advocated for from all those different aspects. And then lastly, as part of iterative design process, so we um, are constantly prototyping and testing before we even get into the build stage so that we're making sure that we're not missing anything key and we're always have the patient-centric uh, design at front of mind. The last section and um, the last part of the process is moving into build and test and learn. So we like to ship quickly so that we can learn quickly. And so we really adopt an MVP mindset. So what's the, what's what can we get out the quickest or that has the um, most impact um, quickly for our users? And what can we learn as quickly as possible as well? Um, quality assurance testing. So all of our designs go through um, quality testing to make sure everything's robust. And then out the back of that, once it's live and out in the world, we then um, make sure that we are doing that data collation again, so that that all feeds back into that discovery phase of the next piece of work that we do. So let's have a look at some design principles as well. So we we pair tone of voice that's, that's considerate and it's friendly with clean and functional and beautiful user experiences so that we can really um, make sure that we're delivering that patient-centric experience throughout all the different touch points within our product so the first part is tone of voice so how 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 it's said and what we say really really matters and so we always adopt inclusive language um to make sure that everyone feels feels safe feels welcomed and we also place a huge importance on jargon free language as well. So um, there are quite obviously a lot of complex um, medical terms that our users need to um, have an understanding of. So we're making sure that we're breaking that down and making sure uh, alongside that we're breaking down any confusion and overwhelm that may come with um, any um, diagnosis, anything like that. And then also making sure that we are empathy led in everything that we that we say and how we communicate at all our different touch points. The second part of our principles is user interface. So how it looks really matters. So placing an importance on accessibility first, um, making sure that our designs and our product are meeting all the different abilities and needs of our users. Um, clean and beautiful design, not only is it important that it looks great, but it also it has a functional element in that if something is clean and beautiful to use, then it means that we're delivering a positive experience and it means it's easier to use as well. And in addition to that, just um, be mindful of the palettes that we're using. So very soft, calming um, palettes that feel inviting, nothing too harsh, nothing too um, invasive to help aid that positive um, user experience. And then lastly, yeah, the, the user experience, so how, how everything works, so how, how we speak and how things look is really important, but effectively how everything works and um, what that holistic experience is for the user. 
Um, so something that we that we are really um, that we've placed a huge importance on is making sure that our users, our participants, always know where they are at in their stage in their journey. So um, they're always in the narrow zone, so no matter where they are. They know where they are now and then where they need to go next. So that helps them feel reassured and that they're in a safe pair of hands with Sanum. Um, ease of use, which we've, we've touched on, which the um, the user interface like helps helps um, compound that, but making sure that every single piece of the product is super easy to use um, so that our participants can, can navigate through our um, products with ease. And lastly, personalized content. So we know that everyone's medical journey is very different and it's personal to them. And so we want the Sano experience to reflect that as well. And so we have personalized content and um, depends on where the participant is in, in, their, in their journey with Sano. So I'm going to run through a case study um, just to set the context for this. This is for a report upload piece of work. So when we are asking for a report from participants, this is when we are pre-screening them for genetic testing or if they've gotten to a certain point in their journey, we're asking them for a report upload at this point. And we're finding two key pain points. One was that there was significant drop off at this point in the process because we weren't given enough information and so possible um, participants that were eligible were just kind of quitting and not coming back to the space and second of all was that we were getting reports that were not of like deemed as high quality which meant that it was wrong information or it's not legible or there's pages missing things like that and so what this piece of work now does to uh, to to elevate that experience to make sure that we're essentially getting high quality reports first time meaning that we can serve um, more um, participants who are eligible for our studies. So the first part of this is there's, there's three screens to this. And the first section is the um, this question where we ask, do you have a genetic report confirming your diagnosis of whichever disease is in question? And previously, we had quite a leading um, specific question that said, do you, do you have a report displaying these symptoms, which can be quite advanced for users that are not specifically um, aware of the different symptoms or don't understand really technical or medical um, information. And so we wanted to strip that back to its most simple form and just ask whether they had a genetic report, first of all. And we've also added in some extra context in there as well to really help flesh out that that um, experience to give our users more guidance. So for example, it says here, where might I find a genetic report? So your healthcare provider may have supplied a genetic report to you via post or email. If you are unsure, contact your healthcare provider. So we've got that point of reference, that call to action, rather than just um, our users dropping off at this point because they don't have the report or they're not sure. And so the next screen is the upload screen. So previously this just had a button that said upload and that was that. And so it wasn't too detailed in terms of what to expect, in terms of what, what to upload, how to upload, things like that. And so we've added a little bit more context in there with this helpful information section, how to upload your report in terms of file format, ensuring the document's clearly legible, and make sure it's included in all pages as well. And then we've also got visual confirmation of once those documents are uploaded, we've got um, a visual confirmation to reassure our users that everything's kind of like uploaded and taken care of. And then lastly, we have this screen um, that just has um, confirmation to say report uploaded. Thank you for uploading your genetic report. Rest assured it's in safe hands and we'll be in touch. These are the next steps. Previously, we didn't have this screen and it just went straight into the to the um, follow on questions. And so this is a nice place to to pause, to acknowledge and say thank you to our users for uploading the report and reassure them on the next steps. And so hopefully this case study illustrates two things. Firstly, how we put patient centric design thinking um, into everything that we do and we follow that process that we went through. And also how we make sure that those design principles in terms of tone of voice, interface design and user experience are all embedded into our design thinking as well. That was great. Thanks for that, Jess. Um, and, and yeah, as you mentioned, it highlights how patient centric design can apply at so many different levels. So even in that single moment, which might only happen once for a participant, everything from our use of colors, UX best practices, as you mentioned, down to yeah, tone of voice and the actual words that we use um, can really help to elevate that experience. And that's the guiding principle that we're trying to apply 
at um, all kinds of different levels. So going to the complete other end of the, the spectrum, looking at the, the macro level of study design, um, yeah, I'd like to introduce one of our ongoing research programs, which is known as Light the Way, and this will kind of help to illustrate the impact of some of this product um, thinking that is really patient informed. So as a quick introduction, Light the Way is a program that is um, for those with symptoms of or family history of ALS or MND, motor neuron disease. Um, this program is really special because it was co-developed with an advisory board comprised of clinical experts, genetic counselors, researchers, and most importantly, individuals with lived experience. And over the course of the two years that this program was kind of in incubation, the emphasis on the participant experience was absolutely paramount and has informed almost every, if not every, aspect of how this project was designed. So in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to walk through a couple of examples of how that patient-centric design has, has actually come to life in really key tenets of the program. Another key tenant of Light the Way is access to qualified genetic counselors, again, free of cost. Finding access to genetic counseling can be really difficult. It can be intimidating and quite expensive. And so this is one of the key ways that the program aims to offer support to participants. Qualified genetic counselors are not only there to walk through the science, to answer questions about symptoms that a participant may have, but they can also help with broader life things. For example, family planning in the case where you do find out that there is a family history of a disease. Um, interest in kind of upcoming opportunities. And for example, some of our participants that are based in the United States, walking through what the implications on health insurance might be, for example. Next, um, patient-centric design has also informed our approach to genetic results and reports. As I mentioned earlier, ALS is a fatal neurodegenerative disease that currently has no cure. And so the moment that someone receives the results of a genetic test, whether it is positive or negative, can be quite an emotional one, and it's something that um, is, is rightfully very sensitive. So a lot of care and collaboration with the advisory board and with our team members here at SANO has gone into providing the right level of support around this moment. And that covers everything from the way that the design uh, of the report is set up, everything from the order of information to the language used, the appropriate reading level, different sections for a participant versus someone like a genetic counselor to come in and interpret that. All of those design decisions were made to make the report as digestible, usable, and meaningful as possible. And we've also made the decision to make these reports clinically actionable, as I mentioned previously. So if they want to move on with that, um, they're not held back by having this information, but then not being able to act on it or carry it forward. And then finally, as Jess alluded to a little bit earlier, um, we offer a personalized study experience. And that is a tenet of, of everything that we do at SANO, but it's especially coming to life and light the way which acknowledges that based on a participant's experience, the information that they might be interested in, what their next steps may be, and ultimately what's going to be the most meaningful part of a research opportunity for them can differ, and it should be tailored to the participant's journey. So for example, we might have people who have known for a long time that they've had a family history of, um, of the disease, who may have even had previous genetic testing, but maybe never had a conversation with a genetic counselor. And so they might be interested in that aspect of a study. Whereas if you have someone who just learned what ALS was a couple of weeks ago and they've started to experience symptoms, they might be more interested in our education modules or some of the pre-genetic test counseling and understanding how it might impact other life decisions. So the goal is to support participants in their various journeys throughout this condition area. And again, a lot of consideration has gone into where participants are coming from, what their past journey has been, and ultimately what their future journey is gonna look like at SANO and beyond. So all of these pieces work together to elevate the participant experience, and we come back to guiding principles of transparency and participant empowerment with a human-centric approach. Um, and this ultimately helps us to deliver clinical trials and to make the participant experience as meaningful and positive as possible, which is always the goal. So we hope this webinar demonstrated how seriously Sanogenetics takes a patient-first approach to product design and clinical research initiatives. Please feel free to check out our website at sanogenetics.com for more resources. Thank you all again for your time and engagement.